different? Have you ever acted in a way that wasn't true to yourself just to fit in? Have you ever put on a mask? I'll admit it. I have felt different. And I had a good friend who has felt different. And it wasn't easy for us to grow up being different. When I was younger, I was a loner. It's hard to imagine now, but I was. I preferred my own company. And as a toddler living in Japan, it wasn't unusual there. I liked being alone, and everybody accepted it. Life was pretty good. I had my crew of pebbles that I would play with, and I loved making up stories in my head. A month before I turned six, we moved. My father was assigned to Taiwan. I was enrolled in class 2B. I remember bringing my favorite striped rock to school to play with. And during recess, kids would look at me funny. They used to say things like, she must be crazy, and don't talk to her. Because you see, I wasn't normal in Taiwan. In Taiwan, it wasn't normal for a girl of six years of age to be playing with rocks instead of dolls and to choose to talk to herself instead of others. I earned my first nickname, Rock Girl. It seems like a pretty cool name for a wrestler, doesn't it? <laughs> but I hated it. I hated being called different, peculiar, and rock girl. I remember running home one day and searching up the word different in the dictionary. Different, something that is not ordinary or totally unalike. According to this definition, I was completely unlike everyone around me. That was when I first decided to put on a mask. I was determined to be normal. I was determined to behave like I thought the perfect girl would behave. I smiled a lot. I tried not to make mistakes. I even spoke to a school counselor, and she advised me to be more like the other kids, and that I had to be normal in order to be different. I am certain that I'm not the only one who has ever felt this way. I am certain that some of you must have felt this too. I used to go to school with a boy who told me that he made his first friend in fifth grade. During recess, he was the boy who wanted to play an imagination game instead of hanging from the monkey bars. After his game had elapsed, even his one friend thought that he was crazy. His first nickname was Psycho. To make it even harder, in eighth grade, he came out, and he was shunned. He told the world, I'm gay, and they insulted him. Kids would stick post-its on his desk and on his locker that read, go home. No one wants you here. Why? Because he was different. I have lived in Japan, Taiwan, China, the United States, and now Holland. I know for a fact that kids everywhere feel the pressure to be normal. We feel the pressure to fit in. But this is the true dilemma. How can we be expected to fit in when we don't even know who we are? Society has put a negative connotation on the word different. And for a while, I believed it. I believed that it was a weakness, a disfigurement. Society has imposed upon us to act a certain way, to talk a certain way. We even have the pressure to dress a certain way. Therefore, from a young age, we learn to erect defenses and to create facades in order to hide ourselves. We put on masks to protect ourselves. But this is the true dilemma. How can we be expected to fit in when we don't even know who we are? Now, when I was 14, I realized that I had had enough. I had had enough of the suppression that I gave myself in order to be accepted. Enough of the pressure I put upon myself to be loved. When I first took off my mask, I was afraid. 
Questions of what my friends would think of me, what others might say to me, plagued my mind. And the words, you have to be normal in order to be accepted, reverberated inside my head. But looking back, I know now that taking off my mask was the right thing to do. I am not going to stand up here and tell all of you that by exposing your true self, everyone will accept you. Because they won't. And I'm not going to tell all of you that the fear of never fitting in will go away. Because it doesn't. But I will tell you that by removing your mask and being true to who you are, you will be set free. And you will be able to be who you want to be and say what you want to say. Looking back at the definition of different, I've realized something. There is no such thing as being different. We are all different, and if we all share the quality of being different, how can any one of us be completely and totally unlike someone else? If we are all different, then aren't we more alike than we are unalike? Therefore, I challenge all of you to be different and to be your special self, to share and extol your differences. After all, being different is normal, isn't it? From ancient times until today, we are still searching for a way to expose who we really are. William Shakespeare wrote this above all else to thine own self be true. Bernard Baruch, a statesperson and a spokesman to presidents said, be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. And Lady Gaga, a person that we all know said, don't you ever let a soul in the world tell you that you can't be exactly